Well, those are your headlines, of course. It's how we continue his discussion with former ESCOM CEO Brian Mollifa. Let's take a look at some of the social media comments we've been getting this evening. Of course, um, there are several coming in. Selen, um, Sentle say here saying, Brian Mollifa is on your view, talking sense about ESCOM, but has he paid us back our money? So let's take a look at WhatsApp. For now, Bongani from Suez is saying, um, Tabo, please ask Brian if your friend gets contracts where one works, does he see it as a conflict of interest or just a business deal? Also from Bongani from Fosler is saying, Mr. Mdluli, may I ask why Brian, Mr. Brian Molefe did not see fit to clear his name immediately after the public protects his report if he feels that his constitutional rights were violated? From Zile here saying, why was Brian always away when all the contracts or deals that seemed to have gone wrong in ESCOM during his time as a CEO? Kefense here from Cullen and saying, please ask Mr. Molefe about the Soweto debt. How can we deal with it together with all those people who are ESCOM, including the Department of Public Enterprise and Parliament? I know, Tabo, um, quite interesting discussion that you are having. So for now, on the back of those tweets and questions, it's back to you. So that line zero one zero five nine four five one four zero. Let's deal with those uh, issues. I mean, uh, the question of why didn't you clear your name immediately, uh, uh, and why, again, for both the guarantee as well as uh, the prepayment when those agreements were uh, uh, concluded, you were never in the room. It's only afterwards that you came and you were confronted by those agreements. Uh, and the question of how do you deal with the, how would you deal with the situation of Soweto debt? The uh... The reason I, I, I did not clear my name immediately is because uh, at, the, uh, um, at, at the time, I took legal advice. Yeah. And um, the legal advice said, well, the public protector did not make findings. So there is nothing to take on review. You can only take findings on review. All she has done is she's made accusations, and then at the end of making all these accusations, she then says, but there are no findings. This must be completed by a commission of inquiry, not even by the public protector, but not even by the office of the public protector. She said, I don't want the public protector to touch it, because the, the correct thing to do was for the investigation to be properly concluded and findings made. That was not done. Mm. Why? Because Advocate Madonsel did not want, behaved as if the office of the public protector was closing down right. and would not, would not continue to exist. But it existed. So the legal advice was we can't go and on review because there are no findings. Yeah. So it's like a stalemate. Yeah. Uh, the president, Zuma, took the report on review and lost. And my legal advisor said, we told you, it was just a waste of money. You have to wait for the commission of inquiry, yeah. because that's what she said must happen. Yeah. A commission of inquiry, which has no authority to, to instruct, should happen. But the commission of inquiry has happened. Yeah. It's three years later. Right. It's three years later. And, uh, and the matters have still not been ventilated properly. The issues of uh, the two contracts, how come, I mean, the other one you said you were in hospital, of course, you could not help, yeah. uh, you were, you were, you were yeah. ill, but it seems both deals, you were not in the room. The decisions were taken by the board tender committee. At ESCOM, I found a very strange situation. Yeah. The CEO is not the member of the board tender committee. Yeah. So I was not a member of the committee that took the decision. So in the case of the prepayment, when the meeting happened and was convened, well, I, I think I was on, on leave anyway. Yes. But even if I had not been on leave, I would not have been invited because I'm not a member of the BTC. The decisions took place at the BTC. Right. Advocate Matonsela, I'm going to let you go in a moment, but just address those two things in closing. The whole issue of um, uh, not having... Uh, allowed this particular inv investigation to fall into the tenure of the next public protector and you rushed to, to, to get into it. What was the reason behind that? But also, uh, having instructed the president uh, and, uh, to, to, to start the commission of inquiry with no authority to do so. Thank you. Uh, 
Thabo. Firstly, Muslim Mulefe, you will know that this matter to the North Gauteng High Court, which confirmed the power of the public protector to establish a commission of inquiry. And therefore, it's not true that the public protector had no authority to instruct the president to establish a commission of inquiry. There's a court case that confirms that. Secondly, on the issue of Mr. Mulefe not having been given an opportunity, um, that's not true. <laughs> Mr. Mulefe, you also had an opportunity to clear your name in Parliament. You still didn't choose to, to clear your name. And during the translation of cell phone records, when we proved that the cell phone had been in the area, the report does say you are in the area. You had an opportunity again to tell the truth. You, it wasn't a game, so you were not supposed to play games about uh, shippings or neshippings. It was a formal inquiry where you had a responsibility as an employee of the people of South Africa to tell the truth about what really happened. You were treated fairly, sir. You had an opportunity to present your side of the story. You chose not to. You, you chose not to do so. You have no right then to complain. Thank you. Advocate Madonsela, let me tell you something. I don't know if you've read my submission to the parliamentary inquiry. I did deal with the matter of the cell phone uh, records. And I said, I did my own investigation, and I found that in a lot of the instances, um, my phone was picked up by the tower in Saxon World, but it had been picked up by another tower uh, a few minutes before, maybe three or four minutes before, and it was immediately picked up by another tower outside of Saxon World, which means that I could have been in a car that was uh, traveling. Uh, and, and, and I have done this analysis, and I presented it to Parliament. Strangely, okay. strangely nobody, let me speak, okay. nobody in Parliament questioned me about what I was saying. And I said, I would like to hear from the public protector exactly how she did this. Uh, nobody from Parliament questioned me on this, and this submission of mine, this part of the submission, did not attract the media attention. It was ignored, completely ignored. Yeah. The fact that I said, in a lot of the instances, I had actually just been, may have been driving, driving through. Driving through. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, yeah, yeah, yes, you were protection. not, sir, you were not, you were not being asked to speculate about wh why your cell phone was there. You were asked a straight answer, and you can still give South Africans and the world a straight answer. Did you or did you not visit the group that come out multiple of times? And if you did, what was the purpose? Uh, advocate, I have, I have uh, never denied having been to the Gupta's residence. But you made then, allegations. Then why are we having this conversation? No, no, I have been to the Gupta's residence. But you made allegations. The way that I don't know where you studied the law, but the way that I understand the law is that anybody who alleges must come with a proof. You cannot just put out a wild statement out there and then expect me to explain myself. It's not how it works. The person who alleges must prove. In this but instance, you had to come up with the information that is conclusive about what you were insinuating. Right. You've okay. never done that. Let, let, you let me just confirmed. I'm, 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 I'm out of time, but uh, that's, that's where we're going to have to leave it for now. Advocate, appreciate your time. Uh, Brian Mulley for confirming, indeed, again, that you were uh, several times at the group. I have been there. Have I know them. You and know they were them. my friends. Yeah. So and there is nothing illegal the, about the, that. The, those cell phone records could be correct, in other words, in terms of the dates uh, that you were at that time. In they, they may time. or they may not be correct. Right. But in a matter as grave as this, yes. we needed to understand exactly how it was done yes. and what the specific allegation was. Right. I mean... Is the, is the advocate saying, therefore, I was doing illegal things at the Gupta's residence? The question was to your close proximity to them, and then the next question becomes, what were you discussing with them so many times in those visits? No, we could, have, we could have been discussing anything. We could have been discussing cricket. You we could have, have been discussing anything. But it is not... Together. Are you saying you it, never it, discussed it, it business, is not, business with them at all? It is not up to me yeah. to, uh, to, to prove 
her allegations. She must prove what she wants to say. She must prove what she wants to insinuate. Right. Your relationship with uh, uh, the former uh, uh, chair, ben, Dr. Ben Guban, see, yes. it seems awfully uh, close. Uh, Mr. Koma uh, giving testimony says, even when you were uh, then dismissed at ESCOM, he actually came in and visited you, which is something quite strange. On the very same night that you were dismissed, he came to your house to pledge solidarity with you, in a sense. Well, uh, uh, the chairperson, I, I did not know him before I got to ESCOM. Uh, and... Um, when we worked on the issue of uh, load shedding, uh, we worked very closely with the chairperson. I think she said, prepare reports and inform us about what is happening. And I would spend the whole night reading those reports and uh, we would engage. And uh, he was very proactive and, uh, and, and he, he really was amazed at how, in a period of six months, we managed to stop the load shedding. When everything happened, he was very emotional, as you saw in the press interview, yeah. and uh, did not want me to leave. Yeah. Uh, and even when I had said, I'm leaving, and I had left, he even came to say, would you reconsider? Mm. But we were close. It was a chairperson CEO relationship. It was professional, okay. firstly. But secondly, it was human. Uh, there was a human element to it, uh, and, and that is why he came. Uh, since these allegations have been made, a lot of people have not come to see me yeah. or have called me. Yeah. But that's fine. But he has, and he has been concerned because he believes that there is nothing wrong that we did. Ramalif, I appreciate your time, and thank you for indulging us in spending a little bit more uh, with us uh, this evening. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's the former CEO at ESCOM, and that's where we're going to leave that conversation this evening. Next, it's a roundtable on media and its relationship with uh, political parties here on Your View, News from Africa, Channel 405. Stay with us.